mute now, everybody. Yeah, yeah. just for information, uh, everybody will be muted except Marin and me. And then when we come to the point where there will be questions okay. and answers, then feel free to unmute and ask questions or write them in. If you have some interesting question, you can still always write sentences. them in chat. <laughs> Okay, uh, so let's start. Uh, so I will say hello to everybody. Uh, thank you for your participation and your time uh, to join our uh, online event, uh, which is called, as you can see probably on my screen, uh, Computer telephone, Telephony Router. Uh, so a short introduction uh, for you uh, who still don't know me. I'm Marin Oderlin, uh, CEO of uh, Maxcom. A small software development and research company from uh, Croatia, uh, Varaždin, uh, and uh, together with my partner Bruno uh, and other team members, uh, I will host this event. Uh, for start, uh, we have to say that this event will be recorded and available later. Uh, and as Bruno already said, uh, we will uh, please have a muted uh, your microphones and uh, later in the last section, uh, Q&A, uh, you will be able to uh, unmute yourself and ask us a question. Uh, I, uh, there are two uh, links on the screen, uh, which you probably used for your registration. So yesterday I also asked people if they didn't uh, do it till now, we would be glad uh, if they do it maybe later after this show, but uh, it's not so important. Um, uh, the planned duration of this event is approximately 45 minutes uh, plus question and answers uh, and yesterday on creation version of uh, this event uh, we actually spent maybe 50 minutes so I, I, I assume it will be the same or the similar today. Um, let's go to agenda. Uh, first we need to tell a few words about uh, this Interreg uh, Hungary Croatia program, uh, Be Light, uh, and what is the relation with our project. Uh, then in the se next section, we will talk about uh, our, let's say, main uh, solution or CT router on the platform, uh, which will be a uh, few words we will say in the next section of CT Engine platform, what it is, uh, why we created the, the complete platform, uh, either we uh, uh, started only with the router product, but in fact, later uh, we decided uh, to create a bit more. Uh, then in the next section, we will uh, say a few words about, uh, or we will present a few demo services and solutions, uh, which, uh, which are made on our platform, like web call center, click to call uh, and alarming. And as I said, in the last section, we will have a Q&A. Um, in this uh, project uh, or and program, cross-border co cooperation program, Hungary Croatia, uh, two companies uh, were uh, or were applied for the project City Router. Uh, the first one and we are the Maxcom, uh, as I said, small Croatian company from Varaždin, uh, specialized mostly in uh, different uh, or let's say mostly in telecommunication. Uh, software uh, and there is the other company Y Collective uh, they are coming from Page in Hungary uh, and they are special they are also a software development company and specialized in uh, uh, web solutions uh, applications user experience uh, user interface and design um, when I'm already mentioning uh, the program, I need to uh, thank to several organizations, uh, our partner Y Collective, Tech Park, Varaždin, uh, then our consultants, uh, Projekt Jednako Razvoj, uh, then Hamak Bikro, Ministry of uh, Regional Development, uh, EU funds, and many others um, which were uh, helping us uh, during the application of this project, during the implementation and uh, with the reports. Uh, on the next slide, you can see the project timeline. Uh, we started uh, to apply uh, for the project in yet 2017, continued in uh, 2018, uh, somewhere in the middle or in July, uh, 
actually June. Yeah, uh, we we started the project, and in uh, now in November the uh, it's uh, the end of our project. Uh, commercial. Uh, uh, the next two years, we we are planning uh, some, let's say, first step in commercialization. But of course, we're planning it uh, even longer, not only in two years. Uh, and uh, now here, for example, you can see just some numbers. So total uh, project uh, worth is about 192,000 uh, euro. Uh, EU contribution is 75% or 144,000. And our own contribution is uh, 40, approximately 48,000. Uh, so let's let's skip to our product. Uh, computer telephony router. Uh, it's a product which is kind of let's say specialized and mostly used in uh, telecommunication business uh, for companies uh, such as telecom operators. Uh, telephony service provider uh, and eventually uh, non-telecom companies uh, which are having uh, larger and maybe older telecommunication infrastructure. Uh, today, as I can see, uh, not a lot of uh, you who are participating uh, are in fact uh, in telecom business. Uh, so uh, this solution that we will now show may seem uh, a bit unnecessary or uh, not impo uh, interesting for you, but uh, please be patient because later on uh, we will move on uh, other sections. We will uh, show our platform and some uh, demonstration of uh, several uh, services, which would be really interesting for a lot of uh, various companies today on the market, especially in uh, IT industry. Um, idea. Um, as I said, Maxcom is in uh, telecommunication business for already like or more than 15 years. Uh, we were uh, still developing a lot of applications related to telephony, uh, special, uh, mostly actually for our uh, main Swiss partner uh, doing in uh, uh, Lucerne, uh, but also for some other uh, clients. Um, as they and we are also having uh, quite large and, um, or let's say, expensive uh, devices on which are based on the older uh, infrastructure like ISDN, uh, we, we had to have always some routers uh, between. Uh, today, uh, tel tele telecommunications are evolving uh, to VoIP and uh, we we would like to uh, reuse or still use our old or older equipment uh, and not just to uh, throw it away with uh, our uh, solution or city router idea uh, to had to create uh, some good router that will be able to connect all these uh, different infrastructure uh, we actually managed to achieve uh, or to, to start uh, to produce this product. Uh, on the uh, next screen uh, or slide, you can see a typical uh, telecommunication infrastructure that we and let's say our clients are having. Um, you can see uh, on the screen, for example, there are some telephony servers or let's say computers. Uh, then there are uh, PBXs or home centrals, with, uh, which are based on different uh, technology like analog, uh, digital or VoIP. Uh, there are also uh, phone devices uh, behind it. And uh, to be able uh, all this equipment uh, to commun communicate together natively, uh, there is a necessity for some uh, communication device or uh, equipment which is able to communicate all with all of them and uh, as needed to convert the uh, protocols and codecs. Uh, router uh, you can see is somehow centralized in, in our infrastructure and it also is used as a gateway toward uh, public uh, telecom carriers. Uh, what is presented here. So I, ITSPs and P, PSTNs, or like uh, public switch telephone uh, network. Um, uh, for example, uh, if we, on these green lines, what you see uh, periodically occurring, uh, this, would, this would present 
let's say one uh, or example of the calls. So if call is uh, initiated by this IP, IP phone, it goes through, let's say some home central, uh, ends in the router and uh, in the router itself, uh, our software is providing possibilities to, uh, to create user-based rules, uh, which will uh, forward such calls to some other destination. Uh, we will show this a bit later on our uh, real product web. But for now, uh, just to, uh, to explain uh, that uh, these routes, uh, uh, the idea behind this route is to match uh, calls from any of these uh, trunks, which is in fact these connection points between all these devices, and to find matching route to forward the call. If uh, there is no matching uh, rule found, uh, then the call would just end, uh, be rejected and it would end uh, and no, nowhere it will be forwarded. If uh, there is found a matching route and the destination is not uh, reachable, uh, our router uh, has possibility uh, to create or let's say user is able to define also the failover uh, routes. The failover route in this example would mean if this route or this trunk is not available, router will be autom will automatically forward such a call uh, through different trunk uh, to the same or even uh, some other uh, reserve destination. Um, now I could uh, switch to uh, web or maybe uh, before that uh, I could emphasize several key features uh, which uh, our product has. So as I said, uh, it enables uh, easily to uh, you uh, easily to create routing roles based on uh, different uh, properties such as caller numbers call numbers etc um, then it enables protocol switching uh, it allows reusing of all the equipment and it's fully controlled uh, and web managed uh, now i will switch to other uh, web here where I will show how this router actually uh, looks like and what is possible to do there. Uh, so this is, in fact, when you see on the left side, there is a menu and it's fully platform here, uh, City Engine, but this part we will show in the next section. For now, we will just show this uh, router options. Uh, so the idea when the call comes in the router itself, it tries to find uh, the first matching uh, rule uh, in the user definition. Uh, here you can see several uh, routes or routing rules what we have created for this demonstration. Uh, the, they are active and inactive uh, routes. Only active ones at that moment when call comes are counted. Uh, so for example, uh, I can show one of these routes uh, not in details because it, because it would be too uh, technical uh, or too yeah too technical. So we will just uh, show the basic uh, idea behind. Uh, when call comes, there is there are caller number call number behind. Also, uh, there are, there is a trunk uh, through through which this call uh, came into the router. Uh, if the this incoming matching is uh, fine then call uh, would uh, took this rule and forward it based on the uh, outgoing definition. Uh, also, when the uh, routing rule is created or modified, uh, we are able to test if uh, we have achieved what we wanted uh, with this definition. So I can write here some caller number and uh, check if it matches uh, the what I have defined in the incoming, but this is also not currently uh, so important. Uh, here, uh, there are also other options what we can do. Uh, we can reroute or reorder uh, such rules uh, and we can immediately check if a call which is coming from some number to some other call number uh, would match uh, our current system settings. So if I write here uh, that call is coming from number one, two, three, and uh, the destination uh, number would be, let's say, four, five, six, 
and the call has came through uh, trunk uh, pjsip office and i try to match i can see uh, that system will show me that uh, there is a matching rule number six which is called xxx to office and a call would be forwarded uh, on the definition what is written in uh, such a rule. Of course, uh, runtime, we can add new rules, delete existing, etc. Uh, now, if, for example, if I disable uh, such matching rule and I try to match uh, any, if there is still any other matching rule in the system, uh, you can see that this uh, imaginary rule, uh, Route 66, uh, which is in fact not a real a rule what we want to show, but uh, the idea is to, to, to present that there is still a routing ra a rule which is uh, able to process our call. But if I disable uh, also this rule and try to match, uh, system will now say there is no any more matching rules and such call would be just rejected. I will uh, switch back to on uh, these rules, what we will need uh, later for make a real call. Uh, and uh, for the routing itself, uh, when I was mentioning our uh, infrastructure and showing the diagram, I said that there, there is possibility for failover definitions. So uh, if one of the trunk, which is uh, set in one of these rule below uh, is not available, uh, based on the same rule, system will try to forward call to any uh, other uh, rule, uh, ra trunk which is at that moment available. So, for example, in this example, uh, all these routes are unavailable, but this is just for demonstration. If, would be, uh, if the color here would be green, it means it's available. Uh, uh, now we could show maybe just one... Um, uh, call which which is passing through such uh, infrastructure or uh, system i will make i will make now one call just a moment so what is happening here we have a channels i will i will stop a call for a moment we have a channels uh, channels are uh, the uh, call lines let's say uh, on these channels a call is coming and one of the channels is uh, taken for for each call uh, for a routing purposes when call comes into the system uh, it tries to find a matching rule and if if it is found it just forwarded through other channel the call to the destination uh, so when i make a call again you can see now that uh, the channels are in some ringing and dialing state. And if I answer it, they are connected and they are talking. Uh, but uh, more about this, uh, we will show in the next section. I will switch back now to the presentation. And in this, let's say last slide uh, for the uh, city router itself, I will just uh, mention several um, benefits what we have, uh, what we have achieved uh, with our product. So uh, one of the most important is that our software, uh, our solution is software-based. Uh, it means it is that it is hardware independent. It, it means that it can be installed on any server machine, uh, personal computer, or even customizable hardware such as uh, Raspberry Pi. And also on, it can be installed on any uh, OS. Uh, then uh, City Router, or city engine at a completely platform can uh, be installed uh, in cloud environment, uh, virtual machines, also in clo enclosed environments. Uh, for low level uh, telecommunication, it uses other telecommunication platforms. In our case, uh, currently it uses Asterisk and we will uh, explain a bit more uh, after why Asterisk. Then uh, we, will, we would say that our solution is quite flexible and it can be customized and tailored to clients' needs. Then uh, I would say that it is uh, price competitive when compared to similar products because it can be installed really on any hardware while uh, existing solutions on the market such as Cisco solutions are mostly or Eculab are mostly hardware based 
and uh, if there is a problem with uh, any component of the hardware you you are in fact you cannot replace the parts of the hardware you you can you have to buy completely new um, equipment and also uh, the last but not the least i would say uh, it is built on our modular uh, city engine platform uh, which we will show a bit more in the next section uh, and this plot the idea be, be, behind the platform is that it can really uh, we can add new models uh, in the future and plugins and a lot of uh, different things what you cannot do on uh, existing solutions uh, I mean the existing solutions on the market like Cisco you what you buy uh, this is what you get uh, so let's uh, skip to the next section uh, or computer telephony engine platform uh so idea behind the platform is uh, to to create uh something that will allow us to build uh, other solutions and not only the router itself uh it is for the future and it is for uh, our let's say uh to to have more impact on on different uh market uh on on let's say on on wider market uh, we didn't want to stay uh, on the router only because we understand it's uh, really specialized solutions and uh, market for such a solution probably is not so big, especially maybe in Switzerland. Yes, as our client told us, uh, since in Switzerland now everything is moved toward VoIP and uh, for sure there are companies who would be able to use the router, but uh, with the platform itself, we are really capable of doing uh, really modern uh, solutions, especially integration with uh, web browser through WebRTC uh, technology and so. Uh, but this will also come later in our presentation. Uh, so what is, uh, I would say that, what, what is really a rout router? Uh, or, or actually the engine? Uh, it's, I would say it's modular telephony communication platform, framework and server in one. It is built in Java programming language, uh, which is quite popular for uh, programming on the server side applications and very powerful. Uh, then uh, for the uh, telephony part, we are using uh, Asterisk communication framework because it's also very quite uh, powerful. It's one uh, of the largest open source projects in the world. It's getting better and better with uh, new versions, and we think it has a really good future. Uh, by this approach, when creating the engine uh, architecture, we were able to focus on building uh, higher level components which are necessary for service logic. And we just let to Asteris to do the telephony. Uh, however, uh, we want to emphasize uh, that uh, the engine is not really, city engine is not really uh, dependent of the asterisk at all. It is using uh, so-called drivers to, com to, commu to communicate with other telecommunication platforms, uh, where the uh, driver for asterisk is currently just one available. But in the future, uh, we want to uh, build also the other drivers for other uh, platforms if there will be need for such things. Uh, actually, we already started with Eculap, but in effect, we realized in some moment that uh, Asterisk would better fit our needs currently. So currently we, in fact, uh, just fully implement Asterisk driver. Um, but uh, if we will have other drivers in the futures, uh, it wouldn't have impact uh, on our developed solutions. Uh, they would still work on our platform because we would just switch uh, the driver uh, in the background and uh, service would work uh, absolutely the same without modifications. So uh, let's uh, move to the platform, web for the platform. Uh, here, uh, I would be able to, to talk a lot uh, about different things, but uh, we want to show just some main sections, what you can see on the screen. Uh, in the monitoring part, uh, we have something what is called so-called engine. Uh, engine is the main container of the system or the, of the platform. 
and uh, here you can see some uh, base properties or main properties uh, on the engine what is going on so for example here you can see uh, what is the current uh, cpu usage on the system and memory usage uh, how many calls were passed through the system since last start uh, also what is uh, worth to mention is uh, the application uh, when i go to the application section here you can see uh, which applications or let's say services are currently loaded on the system or, or on, the, on the platform a runtime it is possible to upload new applications modify existing or delete uh, etc uh, i will go back to the engine and show the other main or most important components of the system uh, those are servers uh, when i go to one of these uh, let's say active or started server it is possible also to go through this uh, menu or part option in the menu uh, and you can see here there is also some uh, main properties which you can see and uh, one of the thing that is let's say special is this communication with uh, other uh, telephony systems here you can see that we use, use asterisk driver and uh, there are also uh, channels on the server and channel is something as i already mentioned it's uh, it's it's uh, one one channel would present one uh, telephone line or one call uh, so when the call is coming in the system uh, it it runs on the channel and and uh, it you in it uses some service lo logic or application on the channel itself uh, also on the server what is worth to uh, show sorry uh, is uh, that they are using trunks uh, so this these are the main parts where the calls uh, could flow or be forwarded uh, to the uh, other systems or devices uh, on the applications as i already uh, shown we have a router but we also have other services uh, which is currently not so important uh, but uh, what we want to show on the platform uh, is also the settings part. Uh, so it means that our platform uh, can runtime add new clients, new users. Uh, and it means that our platform is multi-tenant. Uh, it has multi-user env environment and uh, clients uh, could or can uh, have multiple services on the platform itself. Uh, what you can see here in this part. Uh, user section is in fact, uh, could be person or human behind and also could be uh, interface. Uh, the humans or like admins and agents are the persons who are either managing the system, either managing the services uh, where they have the permissions for them. So if uh, some, some person is uh, admin, he can fully control the complete platform, like adding new services, uh, uh, adding other clients, etc. while the uh, agent is one who has uh, permissions to monitor uh, the only the services uh, which are, let's say, which he owns. Uh, interface is let's say some kind of application behind the system who is communicating with uh, our platform uh, through some uh, API. Uh, I will just uh, move to the next part, which uh, would show the uh, statistics. Uh, each call which is passing through our system, uh, in fact, uh, is recorded in so-called CDR or call detail record. Uh, here you can see that we have like yearly, monthly and daily uh, views and on the calendar itself here you can see how many calls were uh, each day. Uh, also we could filter it uh, per clients, per services. Uh, then we can see the charts uh, which are created uh, every let's say uh, few minutes or depending on how it's configurable, the platform itself, uh, which is showing a different statistic uh, per month, uh, then also per client services. We can show it per month 
uh, on the month view, we can see uh, per each day what was going on, also filter it and so on. Uh, then on the daily view, uh, we can see the details. So for example, the call we, we made uh, like 10 minutes ago was already recorded here. And uh, you can see uh, a lot of details such as uh, some technical details, uh, uh, what was the SIP uh, parameters in the call itself, if it was uh, ISDN call, do you have different data, etc. Also, you can see uh, for each, for which client or service what is uh, done uh, and similar. Uh, I will switch back now to the presentation and uh, we'll show just several key features uh, what were uh, not shown or mentioned in the previous uh, section on the city router so uh, on the platform itself uh, one of the thing that uh, is uh, or feature or benefit is that uh, clients are able to use our existing or they can order from us customized solutions uh, the other would be that uh, they are also able to develop uh, services by themselves if uh, they uh, have access to the, our platform. Uh, then uh, our platform is fully web managed, real time and controlled. And also we provide real time monitoring and statistics. Uh, now uh, we will move uh, to next section services. Uh, where we will sh show and present uh, several services we made for this presentation, such as web call center, uh, click to call and alarming. Uh, and uh, I will now ask Bruno to join uh, presentation and to unmute himself and he will continue. I, I will just help him later to make several uh, phone calls where you will see what is in fact happening. Bruno, okay. please. Thank you, Mario, but you need to stop sharing screen so I can share mine. Okay. So my screen should be shared now. I hope that everybody is able to properly see everything. Um, first, hello and thank you for attending this event. My name is Bruno and I will try to show you a few interesting functionalities of CT Engine platform uh, through few demo services that we created for this particular uh, event. Uh, since we are already a little bit behind time, uh, we won't go into much details, we will start directly. So first demo solution, we call it Web Call Center. As you can see on on uh, our web page. What is in fact Web Call Center? This is just a demo application which uh, purpose is to show uh, some basic call center functionalities which can be achieved uh, through our system uh, in, a, in a way by simply uh, adding uh, extra functionality into already existing solution or creating completely new solution from beginning. Uh, when we go through some main features uh, that it can offer, uh, so the idea is that it has multiple communication channels like phone calls, then maybe SMS communication, email communication, web chat communication or any other channel, but these are let's say the most common ones. Uh, uh, we will, in fact, on this, in these demos, we will try to focus on the telephone part, not on the other channels, because they are not so important. Uh, what is important is that uh, the whole application was created by our partner company, Y Collective, which has no knowledge in telecommunications or telecom part by simply using our library which enabled them to communicate with our platform and to use uh, this communication to make established calls, receive calls and so on. So um, without wasting time, I will switch now to the actual application itself. 
uh, you can see on my screen, this is what uh, this demo application looks like when you are logged in as an agent. And so we have on the left side, some basic menus with uh, communication channels with some kind of contact lists, for example, or being able to send receive emails, which is not so important for now. You can get live overview of other agents that exist in the system. You can see your call history. Um, and um, uh, on the top, you see that currently you are connected to our system. You are uh, able to receive and make calls. So I will switch my status to become available to be able to actually receive calls. And I will ask my colleague Marin to make a call uh, from public network by using his cellular or mobile phone to make okay. a call which will be received in my browser. So uh, for start, I will unmute myself just that you can hear uh, what is going on on uh, my phone uh, and put it on speaker. So there will be some playing message at the beginning. Second. So I'll mute myself just a second. Yeah, please. Okay, so now as you can see, the system received the event that there is an incoming call. I will answer it. Hello. And we can hear my colleague, yes. in this case, not through Zoom, but through my screen sharing. So, call was successfully established. We can talk. Uh, system has Bye -bye. already recognized Marin's number and showed him as a pre existing contact. Um, what system actually did is uh, it checked who of the agents is available for to be to be called uh, who is able to receive call in this case i was the only one so i was automatically called uh, so let's uh, let's demonstrate everything in the other direction so uh, now i will initiate call from my browser to to marin's phone Just a second, did I do double click? Oh, we have, uh, please check the routes, uh, if they are enabled or not. Let, let's, let's move to other section, just a second. Uh, I suggest that we move to other section that we see what, yeah. what okay, happened. We, uh, we don't have <laughs> too much time to uh, to check now, but uh, let's demonstrate calling from browser to browser. So as you can see, uh, Marin is already logged in and he is online. So this time I will call him to his browser. So this time we skip the public network completely. And now we are connected directly browser to browser. Hello. Yeah, and we can hear Marin without any issues. Um, so um, the behavior is really simple. This is just to demonstrate capabilities. How can you add telephony or uh, phone channel into your existing solution? Uh, so uh, maybe a next system would be even more interesting. Oh, just a second, Marin says that we can, yeah, okay. This time, uh, this time uh, it My works, okay. So if you can hear his mobile phone is ringing. Hello. And he, he was able to answer. So I guess probably he forgot to enable one of those rules uh okay that he was demonstrating on so uh let's switch to the next application which is uh called uh it's called uh click to call what is the idea behind the click to call application uh, uh we will demonstrate that the adding telephony support to your website or your web solution can be uh, as easy as including one JavaScript library file. 
and this is exactly what you can see here. Uh, the solution itself offers seamless integration into any existing web solution and really any existing web solution. It's just a JavaScript plugin which works in most of the modern browsers. Unfortunately, we cannot support older browsers. Uh, it can be customized co and configured to match your visual identity uh, or to match some specific behavior, but uh, the simplest possible solution is to use like default, uh, default options. Uh, how it works? In this diagram, you can see typical user, he is using his computer through web, your web server, your web page is being accessed and the click to call application is served either from your web server or from our city engine. Uh, when user clicks call button or wants to initiate the call, uh, authentication server will be contacted to make sure that this is a valid user and user will be forwarded to our city engine solution which will, depending on configuration, uh, uh, decide what it needs to do. In this case, for example, it will try to make a call to one specific phone number. If uh, this call is not answered, then it will try to make a call to another phone number. And in the end, it might even end up calling uh, some other uh, browser. Everything depends on the configuration. Uh, so, to demonstrate this, uh, uh, I will make a small call. Uh, the, the, uh, the actual application here is this green button which appears on the right side. So when I click it, it will initiate a call which will uh, end up on Marin's desk phone. I will so, unmute myself, unmute. So when I allow it to make a call, the call Please is wait being until made we connect you to an agent. and you can also see in the overview of the uh, city engine platform that click to call application is being uh, like answered and dialed. And when Marin answered his phone, Hello. now they are connected and we, we are able to talk. Uh, so for example, if Marin hangs up, the call is cleared and uh, the same uh, situation happened here. Uh, user knows that call has ended. In order to show custom, let's say customization option for this application, we have the same application running on different parts of this web page. In this case, it's here, this button. This button gets injected at specific location on the page. It has specific design which matches this uh, page design and it has specific behavior in a way that if I click it, it will uh, like Please try to prevent you, you to from an clicking agent. any other links because unfortunately when you go to other page or try to refresh your browser, Hello. it will actually hang up the call. That's the behavior of browser. We cannot really uh, avoid it. So in this case, I can only just click hang up and that's it. So to demonstrate like typical, let's say, uh, already done solution which you just include or the other solution which is a little bit more customized to match your requirements. Uh, the application itself in the background is the same, the behavior is the same. And as the last demonstration uh, service that we want to show is service, simple service that we named Alarm. The idea behind this service is that uh, uh, sometimes uh, when you get some alarming situation in your environment, you want to be notified by a phone call, not just by email or SMS. And this is demonstration service of such, uh, such, uh, such alarming logic. Uh, so what it does, it, uh, it waits for outside event to trigger logic and based on configuration, it will, uh, as you can see on the diagram, and based on configuration, it will uh, initiate one or more calls and maybe possibly do some, uh, um, let's say, uh, 
uh, extra behavior or maybe sending uh, extra emails or extra SMSs, whatever is needed. So the typical uh, uh, situation is your service, wherever it's uh, located, will trigger alarm request into our environment. Uh, this will be triggered by typical HTTP request as simple as possible. Our uh, service will in fact uh, recognize this event uh, as one of one type of alarms. It will decide what it needs to do based on previously configured rules. And it will, for example, start to make calls, uh, escalate calls and so on and so on. So now I will uh, ask my colleague Marin to actually simulate triggering of alarm event which we should be able to see in, uh, in channel overview. So you see, uh, HTTP request was sent. This part you cannot really see in my uh, screen, but we have a service that has answered. You can, you can hear it in Marin's microphone. So what service did is in fact, it, it played previously defined a message which says something like hey there is something strange going on press one to accept this alarm or any other key or hang up to actually uh, reject this alarm so if you are the person who is able to handle this alarm you would normally press one and accept it and there the system would stop escalating calls. If you are wrong person or not able to handle this alarm at the moment, you will simply uh, reject this. Next person would get called and so on and so on based on uh, based on other rules. So maybe Marin can show that, for example, if first person rejects call that another phone will be. So just a second. So now we see that alarm is incoming. There is new alarm task. Press one if you will process it or any other key to pass it over. So this time Marin pressed any other key and system automatically tries to call the other phone. There is new alarm task. Press one if you will process it. You are the last agent from the list. And this time you can accept. So in this case, uh, system even notified that uh, you are the, actually the last person in the list. So uh, it would be wise to actually accept this, but, but it's up to configuration of the system. Uh, and I think that this would bring us to the end of our demo services. Of course, everything can be customized and configured differently, but for now, I think that we are already quite late. So I suggest we go to the questions and answers and I will let, I will stop share my screen and let Marin continue. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, if you have any questions, uh, now would be the time uh, to ask us whatever you like. Uh, you can unmute yourself or maybe we have something in the chat. I'm not sure if... So far, nothing, nothing. written in chat. Um, okay, uh, if you don't have... We have... We have? We have one. Uh, Mr. Robert Pani. I'm not sure how to pronounce this, so I, I, I will not try to pronounce. Uh, depending on uh, what, what are your needs, uh, so... You can either use our cloud-based solutions and our services, or you can actually license the whole platform for your development. Uh, so uh, that would be like the main type of licensing. So either you are interested in the end services or you're interested in the actual development. Uh, I'm not sure if that is a satisfying answer for you or um, uh, the price list, uh, since we are just finishing the project, the price list is not yet available, but we, it will be available on, on the City Engine web page as soon as we, we put it, when we, when we go through the basic models and the ideas. 
Thank you for your question. Uh, you can unmute whoever likes to ask something. Uh, okay, I have a question. Uh, just, just a second, please. Uh, Mr. Blitz uh, wrote first in chat, so I think we should, we should uh, answer to his question first. Uh, uh, by normal dialing, uh, dialing I assume uh, by typing in any number. Uh, I guess, I guess that's what you mean. In this case, uh, we already had Marin's number in in contact, so mm. it, it didn't make sense to actually me for I me can to make, type the number. But in you fact, can, you, you can, can demonstrate uh, if anyone want, uh, wants to uh, make a call uh, with his phone. Uh, it's, it's possible. I think, I think you can trust us that you can actually type in any number. Yeah, yeah but uh, please, please, uh, yeah, make a call to the, our system. Um, let's show the number on the screen. Just a second. Where I can show it? Uh, you mean uh, to okay. web call three, center demo or? Three eight five uh, four two seven 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 seven. 29 is uh, actually the phone number uh, of this uh, call center. So if anyone likes, uh, it's able to make a call to this number. Uh, we will get a call in the system and we can dial back after. But we can also type any number. Uh, to continue with, with the answer, so you can type in, in fact, any number. You can dial any location in the world as long as you have way to reach this particular location. So it's normal telephony solution. A dialer is an option. The dialer would be what we call a service. So if you have a specific need, for example, to make a lot of out dials and uh, let's say to, to, to have like typical mass uh, out dial solution, we can produce it without any issues. It's it's no big deal with or without some specific logic or business logic inside it. So, uh, and uh, I know this sounds a little bit, let's say, like bragging, but uh, any service is available. There is uh, pretty much everything can be done and rather easily and rather fast. Uh, that's why we suggest always that uh, who is interested in the development part to contact us later, we can produce another event or we can have like private meeting where we can demonstrate exactly what development looks like in the Cinti City Engine platform. Um, yes, it will be. Uh, okay. so. Uh, for Mr. Uh, for Mr. Robert, uh, this is recorded and we will put it online. So uh, you will probably get the link in the email. Uh, now we can address uh, Mr. Berislav. Um, uh, in fact, uh, uh, what we showed is a library for a browser. Uh, so if you use your mobile phone your smartphone uh, browser, it can actually be used for this. So you can actually open the web page in your smartphone browser, click the button and it will actually make a call. Uh, but uh, it's it's not, uh, let's say, mobile application. So it's not like Android or iOS specific application. This is just to demonstrate connectivity with web. Uh, any Android or iOS application can be made uh, and the library to help to communicate with City Engine can be easily made. And our goal is, in fact, to have such library available so that third parties can actually implement any of the City Engine functionality inside their uh, Android or iOS applications. Thank you. Great. That that's a, that's a, that's a good. This is enough. What we need. Yeah. Okay. So is there any other question? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Like we mentioned before, there are no stupid questions, only stupid answers. So no more questions. Um, in, uh -huh, yeah, we have. Uh, there is a list of application on dashboard that are Java services. Uh, those, uh, we call them application. 
So Marin can show a list of applications. We call them application. This is a, a service or application. It depends how you want to refer to them. So in this case, you can see uh, that we have it's about 10 15 yeah i would say these are just you know for testing and for demonstration uh, those, these are, are... Um, those are not let's say yeah so uh, real live services those are just for demo purposes and for testing so for example you can see that we were testing conferencing logic so uh, maybe one thing that wasn't mentioned before by marin uh, why we actually went with asterisk as a telephony platform is because uh, in our testing and our uh, experience asterisk was uh, powerful enough to handle a lot of calls and by a lot i mean on typical hardware it can handle easily more than a few thousand calls at the same time and our platform itself adds a little bit footprint for the services uh, for the usages of resources and services but still let's say if it takes i don't know 10 20 percent of uh, of available resources asterisk should still be able to handle maybe not 3000 calls but maybe 2000 calls at the same time which is probably more than enough but uh, if you want to scale this up you just need better hardware or in in case uh, like we have here you can have one city engine uh, uh, managing two servers which can be actually let's say considered as two asterisk machines so uh, or so you can easily scale it up uh, by adding new city engines in the system or new servers in the system or new or better hardware uh, so to to actually answer uh, mr berislaus answer is uh, these are not uh, docker containers so it's a specific uh, uh, code which was meant to be executed by city engine which is developed in java and it's being run inside city engine environment uh, so uh, it's not it's not like virtual machines it's not a docker mm -hmm. thank you uh, would it be possible to develop URL callback to client server and somebody presses dtmf code in real time uh, yes in fact the that's the way how well, let's say this uh, web call center demo is not really relying on dtmf but the idea is that uh, our Java, in this case, JavaScript library is actually forwarding events from city engine to web and from web to city engine. So it allows uh, uh, real, really real time events to be handled. So it's up to application to actually decide if this event is interesting for them or not. So in, in case when user presses DTMF or when DTMF is detected, this event will be fired from city engine through our library to application and it's up to application to decide what it wants to do with it. And the other way around application can in, in any moment uh, through our library uh, make some API call which can do anything so your application can call some url with for example rest api or it can call uh, our api which is specifically designed for it to actually call third party rest api so it's really it's really flexible i would i would add just that uh, when you uh, think about the platform it's really open platform so any kind of service uh, we can build on it if you need uh, api and those service specific uh, apis uh, even with uh, WebSocket communication, uh, this all can be done on uh, such services. So your uh, system uh, is able to uh, communicate with our services on the platform, uh, whatever it, uh, however it is uh, required. Uh, so it is not like closed uh, platform where you can uh, have so many APIs and that's it. It's really uh, when you create a new application in the system, uh, you upload it and automatically with this application uh, you get all the API uh, endpoints uh, which are 
specific in, in such an application. And also such application is reusable in the, in, on the platform itself. So it can be used for multiple uh, clients, even for one client multiple times on different services with a different configuration. So uh, I think uh, it should be quite powerful. And uh, of course, we just finish uh, all this stuff. But as we know, if there, are, uh, there will be uh, interesting services in the future that we plan to even uh, uh, add uh, other possibilities in the platform itself. One of the things that we also didn't mention are these plugins, uh, which is sim something similar like a, an application, but again, different. Uh, but uh, maybe uh, we shouldn't go uh, too much uh, into it uh, because uh, we would like that anyone uh, who has uh, like some uh, special or let's say they want to uh, talk with us uh, about some integration into their system that we make a separate uh, meetings for uh, such things. And you can contact us uh, on the City Engine Net URL. There is a contact form or even this <laughs> call button on which we can answer. So we make separate meeting uh, to discuss about your needs and uh, how we can uh, integrate our platform or solutions uh, with uh, your needs or your system. Uh, do we have any other question now or? That was all. Feel free to ask anything or if, to if schedule all... some meeting with us so yep. we can answer more detailed questions uh, yesterday there were some let's say development specific questions which were answered but we always say feel free to contact us as any at any time and we will try to explain as much as possible if that's all thank you for your attention for your participation uh, we hope that you enjoy it, at least some parts, and that uh, in the future uh, we can make uh, either some business together or that you can make any recommendation to show to somebody what we did. We will put uh, the recordings uh, in the uh, next days somewhere online, like on YouTube or not really sure where, but we will let you know uh, through your email if you left uh, contact. So thank you again and have a nice rest of the day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for a nice presentation. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Super presentation. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you and goodbye. Bye bye. Yes.